For centuries, medieval builders used a method so effective that entire structures outlasted the people who built them, yet the knowledge quietly vanished with the rise of industrial lumber. This is not folklore or romantic exaggeration. It is a documented practical technique that hardened timber against rot, insects and moisture using nothing more than controlled smoke. In the beginning, there was a remarkable approach to woodworking that honestly most of us have forgotten. The secret lay in how timber was treated before it ever became part of a building. If you've ever stood inside a medieval hall or church and wondered why its beams are still sound after hundreds of winters, well, this is the missing explanation. Why medieval timber survived when modern wood often fails. Medieval carpenters worked with green wood far more often than we do today. Kiln-dried lumber did not exist, yet their beams resisted decay for centuries. The reason was not luck or superior forests, it was smoke curing. Freshly cut timbers were exposed to cool, resin-rich smoke, for weeks or even months before construction. This process altered the chemistry of the wood itself. Smoke deposited phenols, resins and organic acids into the outer layers of the timber, creating a hostile environment for fungi and insects. At the same time, slow drying reduced internal stress, preventing cracks that allow moisture to enter. Now, let's talk about how smoke curing actually changed the structure of wood. When timber is exposed to steady smoke, heat gently drives out moisture while smoke particles bond to the wood surface. These compounds act as natural preservatives. They block fungal growth, deter wood-boring insects, and reduce the wood's ability to absorb water later on. Medieval builders didn't describe this in chemical terms, but, you know, they understood the result. Smoked beams stayed harder, darker, and far more durable than untreated wood. That's exactly why roof timbers above open hearths often survive longer than enclosed structural wood. Hearth smoke was not an accident, but really a design choice. In medieval homes and halls, open fires burned day and night. Roofs were built high, not just to vent smoke, but to bathe rafters and beams in it continuously. Over years, this slow exposure completed the curing process, making the wood, well, remarkably resilient. In barns and halls, freshly cut beams were deliberately installed above hearths to accelerate preservation. Smoke blackening was not cosmetic damage, it was protection. Builders knew that timber exposed to smoke would resist rot even in damp climates. Back then, dedicated smokehouses were used for timber preparation. Beyond domestic structures, some medieval workshops actually use smoke sheds specifically for timber. Beams were stacked above smouldering fires fueled by resinous woods like pine or oak. The fires were kept cool enough to avoid charring, but steady enough to produce dense smoke. This could last for weeks, honestly. The goal was penetration not burning. Wood treated this way was reserved for load-bearing elements, ship parts and structures exposed to moisture. So why did this method disappear from common use? The loss of this technique was not because it stopped working. It was because speed replaced patience. Industrial sawmills, chemical treatments and kiln drying allowed wood to be processed quickly. Smoke curing took time, space and constant attention. 
as buildings became disposable and repair cycles shortened, longevity stopped being the goal. The knowledge faded, surviving only indirectly in smoke-blackened medieval roofs and a few traditional crafts. But, you know, you can still apply the medieval timber smoke trick today. This method is still usable with simple tools. Start with green or partially dried wood. Build a small smoke chamber using a shed, pit or enclosed frame. Use a low fire fueled by hardwood or resinous softwood. The fire should smoulder, not flame. Place timber above the smoke path, not directly overheat. Maintain airflow to prevent condensation. Smoke the wood for several days to weeks, depending on thickness. The surface will darken and develop a distinct smell, a sign that protective compounds are bonding. Why this technique is valuable for survival and off-grid building. Smoke timber requires no chemicals, no electricity, and no specialised equipment. It produces wood that resists insects, mould and moisture naturally. For cabins, sheds, fencing or tool handles, this method dramatically increases lifespan. In survival conditions, where replacement materials are scarce, durability is security. Medieval builders understood that prevention mattered more than repair. How smoke curing compares to modern treatments. Unlike pressure-treated lumber, smoke timber does not leach toxins into soil or water. It remains breathable while still resistant to decay. Repairs can be made without protective gear. While it may not replace industrial treatments for every application, it excels where simplicity and sustainability matter. Medieval builders trusted it for centuries because it worked consistently. Why understanding this method changes how we view medieval intelligence. This was not superstition or accident. It was observation refined over generations. Builders noticed which beams lasted and adjusted their practices accordingly. The medieval timber smoke trick represents a mindset that valued long-term thinking over speed. It reminds us that advanced knowledge does not always look modern. What this forgotten technique teaches us today. The survival of medieval structures is proof that low-tech solutions can outperform high-tech ones when designed with care. Smoke-cured timber stands as a lesson in patience, material understanding, and respect for natural processes. It is a reminder that some of the most effective technologies were born from necessity, not convenience. If you found this exploration valuable and want more lost knowledge brought back into the light, subscribe to In the Beginning. Share this video with fellow history and survival enthusiasts and help keep these centuries-old techniques alive by understanding and using them where they still matter.